Yo, what's going on everybody? Welcome back for another video. I just wanted to do a quick, quick intro to this video before we get started. First of all, I wanna say welcome to a bunch of you guys who are newly subscribed to this channel within the last like you know month or so. And if you guys are new to this channel and you don't have the bell notification on for future videos, make sure you do so. I got a couple videos of me going to some new barbecue restaurants I haven't been to, as well as our trip in Kansas City. And before we get into this video, I also wanna say this video is kind of like a part two of a video that I did a long time ago in 2018 when I did the overnight shift at Terry Black's. So if you guys haven't seen that video first, I would definitely, definitely recommend you guys checking that one out. And I'll leave a link in the top corner for you to check out so you can do so. With that being said, let's get into today's video. All right, guys, so we're here around 7.30 at Terry Black's, about to start this first shift. A little nervous because I don't know most of these guys, uh, and I'm sure they don't know who I am. So, uh, yeah, it's time to earn that crud back with uh, working with people that uh, you haven't worked with before, but it should be fun. So as we walk in right now, we just see the overnight crew just finishing off their last round of turkeys before we take over. And before we take over, I just want to do a quick introduction for our morning crew. So in today's morning shift, we're working with Chris, Chris, and Rory. Be sure to follow these guys on Instagram as well and show them some love. And as I communicate during this video, I am also going to be referring to these pits as numbers. We got pit one, pit two, pit three, and then in the back, we got the one that's closest to us, pit four and five in the back. Before we start loading up pit three, we wanted to make sure we just kind of game plan of how we want to fit all these briskets in. Every smoker is a little bit different. It has its hot spots and its cool spots. And so we just want to make sure everything gets in the right spot. Even though all these briskets will be rotated, there is an unusual cool spot in the back of pit three. So I just remember every single time I was loading up pit three, it was something that we always have to keep in mind. At Terry Black's, the briskets are seasoned and trimmed the day before. So right here, what you're seeing us do is just put another layer of black pepper on top to even out the seasoning. It's one of those steps that you can do to save yourself some time. If you plan on doing a slather and seasoning with a shaker, I would highly, highly recommend using this process. But if you're gonna be doing it the day of, I would recommend using the bus tub method just because it's a little bit faster and you won't be using a big chunk of your morning slathering briskets, seasoning them up, and cleaning up after yourself. On the day of the cook, I wanna be able to get the briskets on as soon as possible. With the volume that they're cooking nowadays, and as soon as a pit is freed up, it's pretty much being filled in with another round of whatever else needs to go on next. Keeping a cook schedule is really important to make sure everything gets checked at its appropriate time. Pit 2 is filled up during the overnight shift with briskets and now is the time to rotate. As we're doing these rotations, there are a couple things that we're going to be doing. We're going to give the briskets a quick spritz. We're going to be tipping the briskets to get rid of any pooling liquid and adding foil caps to lean ends that are starting to curl up. If you guys want a more detailed video about the explanation of foil caps, I'll leave a link to that video in the top corner for you guys to check out. Now that we've done our first rotation and we have a little more space up front, while Chris finishes rotating these briskets, I'm gonna grab some beef ribs so that we can fit them in front of the pit. Oh, Barats is here. All right, so it's 10.25. We got a couple people rolling into the parking lot. Give our first pit tour of the day. Uh, but yeah, it's nice to be back. And it's nice to work with a couple new people as well. Seven and a half hours. Seven and a half hours. Look at that knife. Best trimmer right here. Thank you. 
fastest trimmer in Austin right here. <laughs> Social media influencer. Another big part of our job as cooks is to be able to give pit tours. Pit tours are an opportunity for us to really connect people with the food and have the full experience of being able to see how it's made and also be able to eat it themselves. Receiving pit tours from knowledgeable cooks is probably honestly the reason why I decided to move to Texas in the first place. Having the opportunity to talk to the cooks, at least for myself, was one of those opportunities that I never thought I would be able to receive. And the hospitality of those individuals really helped me define what I wanted to do when I was a cook. Even though talking about the same thing over and over and over again can be a little bit tiresome, having the opportunity to give someone a pit tour is something that I really cherish. All right, guys, so just quick update. Uh, we just finished the morning shift. Some morning guys are gone. Afternoon guys just hopped in. Uh, it's about 3.30 or so. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, the rest of this night, it's just gonna be finishing off these briskets that we started. And uh, who knows, maybe loading some stuff on for the overnight shift. It's my guy, Oscar, right here. Hey, what's up? He used to work overnight shift, so then he just got a, got a new pit. It's gonna be super cool. <laughs> As you guys can see right here, all my briskets that I'm testing for, I'm doing by feel. A lot of people will ask me, what temp am I pulling briskets at? And I don't really have a specific temp that I'm trying to reach. Everything I try to do is by feel because ultimately that is the best way to know whether or not a brisket is finished or if it is tender. I use temperatures as a way to kind of verify that it's reached a certain temp like it should be above 200, but I don't want it to go over, let's say 215, because that's generally when a lot of briskets become overcooked. Right here, we're doing our second check on these briskets and they're still feeling a little tight. But you can see how I'm flipping the brisket over so I can kind of get to the bottom of the lean to feel the looseness of that. Generally, that's what I'm looking for and feeling for the most, how loose that lean end is towards the bottom. And you guys saw me wrap it a certain way earlier. I want to be able to get access to the bottom of the brisket without having so much paper underneath. Unfortunately, a lot of these briskets are still feeling pretty tight, so we had to move them down closer to the firebox. All right, as you guys can see, pulling brisket sometimes doesn't always happen like you want to. That first one, they felt pretty good or felt like they're on track, but um, you know we could only get like three or four off. And then we thought, hey, you know what? The next one is going to take another 20 minutes, and they need a lot more. But um, you know, with all these different pits, they're they all cook a little bit differently. They all have different types of draws. They have different hot spots and cool spots. So. You know, this is, like I said, this is where, this is this is barbecue boot camp, just being able to cook on different pits and um, and having briskets are always gonna be their own thing too. No two briskets are gonna be the same, but yeah, I mean, we got most of it done. We got three that are still a little bit tighter, but it should be able to come off in the next 20 minutes. And uh, yeah, and then we gotta pull off the next briskets and see what else we have to load afterwards. Pit two that we got on it, 5.30 is now done. My yeah, two minutes right here. early. <laughs> perfect. We're gonna call it perfect. It's perfect. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, yeah. You already know. Yeah. We just finished our first pit of briskets, but the second one on about four hours later. So it's gonna be a little bit more time before we wrap that pit up. Park ribs, park ribs. All right, so I guess we're also doing some pork ribs. <laughs> never stops here and you never know what you got next. 
before we load pit two full of ribs, one thing I wanna make sure that we do is do a big batch of sausage. Throughout the day, we'll reheat sausage by throwing them in front of the pit, but at this part of the night, when we're trying to finish off beef ribs and briskets, this is when the fires are the hottest. And because we had the luxury of an empty pit, I decided to take 20 minutes to reheat a large batch of sausage. That way we wouldn't have to worry about it for the rest of the night. And of course, at night, we even get more customers coming through. So we always have to be ready to get another pit tour. Top Rex, because we're doing so freaking much. Yeesh. How many uh, porkers are you putting on right now? Uh, 44. I was trying to put 44. Let's see. <laughs> trying to put on 44. Oh, my yeah. God. So we just finished wrapping up pit three. So that is the last of the briskets that we're gonna have to worry about. And then what we got ribs on pit Ooh, one, yeah. pit two, finishing briskets on pit three. Oscar's got briskets on pit four and five. So we're almost at the end. Uh, but yeah, be long day. I'm uh, probably have to rip some foil for the overnight guys for those ribs and um, other than that we just need to finish pulling off briskets and then doing some cleanup before we end our shift. looking for right here is to make sure that we don't have a black ring happening around this. So if we have yeah. a black ring starting to show up, it means I left them up here way too long. So I'm going to get these down, picking them up, feeling how they're cooking, looking to see that that meat's starting to shrink away from the bone a little bit. And I just want all of them to get a turn up here yeah. where all the heat is. That's, uh, that's the hard thing about cooking with those top wrecks, right? Having to find that balance between everything. Mm-hmm. This is my favorite part is going underneath them and pretending like they're not gonna drip on you. <laughs> All right, we're about 14 hours into the shift now and I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I just hit a wall. <laughs> I'm exhausted right now. And uh, I also realized I didn't eat anything until about an hour ago, so that's probably having to do with that as well, but uh, yeah, it'll wall, barbecue's hard. Uh, you know, this is why you have teams of people to not have to do this and not have to work uh, double digit hours like this with a super strenuous job, but that's what I chose to do today just for fun, but uh, yeah. 
I am pretty tired, but at least we're only doing this for today. One more right here. Yeah, buddy. This is it right here. This has it's to be, be it. it. I don't care. It's gonna be it. <laughs> this is it. Woo! Yeah, boy. Just around 11 o'clock and we started it around 7 30 this morning so nice long day all right everyone knows one of my favorite things to do during the shift is wrap risk it but this is also one of my favorite things to do uh when closing out at terry blacks yeah <laughs> So at the very end of the night, we gotta clean our scrubber, but... All right guys, so we're gonna be signing out here from the rooftops at Terry Black's and it's just a really good time just to cook with a couple of new guys that I've never cooked with before, uh, just to share our love of barbecue and just kind of be able to show you guys what it looks like to work a double shift, um, you know, morning and uh, night shift. But um, if you guys like this video and if you guys want to see more and this video gets, I don't know, let's say, make it interesting, let's say a thousand likes, maybe they'll let me come back and we'll do a 24 hour shift and I'll be able to show more of uh, what they do behind the scenes. Anyway, guys, if you guys like this video, please make sure to like, subscribe, share this video with your friends, and I'll see you guys in the next one.